response, we need to just evaluate this following integral. So we have 6x plus 10 over x squared plus 4x plus 24 dx. So what you would first probably want to look at here is that is partial fractions doable for this problem? And the answer to that, unfortunately, is no, because the bottom does not factor into linear terms, uh, at least with whole numbers. So partial fractions really isn't going to work here. So what we're going to have to do instead is complete the square on the denominator and try to split the fraction up. Um, typically when you do this, you're going to end up with one term that's some sort of ln and another term that's an arctangent. So let's try that here. So what we're going to start by doing is our numerator, 6x plus 10 is going to stay the same. Let's see how we can factor that. Now, x squared plus 4x plus 4 would be a perfect square. We have an extra 20 added there. So we can write that as such. So that's just splitting the 24 into 4 and 20. And then the first part of that can be factored into, that's x plus 2 quantity squared. <clears throat> so this is a little bit easier to work with than this, because now we can see some things are going to happen here that are what we want. So the next step is a little bit tricky, and there's a bunch of different ways that people end up doing this, <clears throat> but I'm going to show you the way that I think is the quickest and makes the most sense to me. Um, so part of this is going to be an ln, and part of this is going to be an arctan. And you should have that expectation right off the bat when you're doing these types of problems. So remember that you have a function. A function will work out to be an ln when you do the integral if the t derivative of the bottom is the top, right? So if the derivative of the bottom is the top, or at least by a off by a constant, you will have an ln. That's always how that's going to work. So we can see here, if we take the derivative of our denominator, this 20 is going to disappear. We're going to get 2 times x plus 2. And remember, constants don't really matter here. So our numerator has to be a multiple of some sort of x plus 2. So right now, it's not, but we could get it that way. And what we're going to do here is instead of use 6x plus 10, we're going to split this into two different integrals, one of which is an exact multiple of x plus 2. So an exact multiple of x plus 2 would be if we had 6x plus 12, because if our 6 factored out, that would be exactly x plus 2. Okay, but you can't just change 10 to 12 because you feel like it. We added 2 from the numerator, so we would have to subtract 2 and we could do that by putting it over the same denominator. <clears throat> so keep in mind, just to verify to yourself, if I put these back together and subtracted them, they have the common denominator, so you could just put that back. We'd get 6x plus 12 minus 2, which is 6x plus 10. So the, way, the reason I split it like this is because now this part will work out to be a perfect ln because our numerator is a multiple of the derivative of the denominator. This one we'll have to deal with separately and we'll do that one afterwards. So let's deal with this one first. So first of all we can take a 6 out. <clears throat> so from, from here on out I'm just working with the first integral there. So we can take a 6 out, we'll get x plus 2 <coughs> x plus 2 squared plus 20 on the denominator. <clears throat> so you can see here what happens uh, when we take the derivative of the bottom. We get 2 times x plus 2. So we're going to just have to divide by 2, and this is going to be an ln uh, in perfect form. Just to be clear, what we're really doing here is we're setting the denominator equal to u and doing u substitution. These come up often enough though <clears throat> that it's worth it just to remember that you can use the numerator be the exact derivative of the denominator. In fact, what might make this a little bit more clear is that 
since we had 6x plus 12, we can split that up however we want. Our derivative of our denominator is 2 times x plus 2, so let's just leave that 2 in the numerator. And then out here would be a 3 instead of the 6. <coughs> so basically, even though I could factor out 6, I'll just factor out 3 because then the numerator is exactly the denominator, or exactly the derivative of the denominator. And therefore, this integral just becomes 3 ln of the denominator. Which, and then you actually don't need absolute value because uh, the denominator is always positive anyway. <coughs> so we have 3 times ln of x plus 2 squared plus 20, and that's the value of this, this integral right here. So now let's move on to this one. So for this one here, <coughs> now we just have a constant in the numerator. We definitely could not get the derivative of this denominator to occur up here because we don't have any x's. <coughs> And when we have the form an x term squared plus a constant, that should uh, key in on your knowledge of arctangent, and that's what uh, the form of arctangent looks like, or the derivative of arctangent looks like this form. So when we integrate this, we're going to get some sort of arctangent, but we need to make it work out a little bit nicer. So again, a couple people, I mean, people do these in a couple of different ways. Um, you could just have the kind of the form memorized where you always just take the square root of what's there and deal with it like that. I'm going to factor it out and show you how to do it, like, I guess the long way. So the first thing we can do is we want to factor out <coughs> the 2. And in the denominator, we want to factor out a 20. Because in order for an, uh, an integral to become an arctangent, when you have the x term squared plus a number in the denominator, that number needs to be 1 to use the formula uh, correctly. <clears throat> so what we're going to end up with here is x plus 2 squared over 20 plus 1. So that's taking 2 out of the numerator, 20 out of the denominator. Of course, this is 1 tenth. <clears throat> So you can see here, this is looking pretty much exactly like our tangent. The last thing we might want to do just to make this a little more, even more like the, your typical formula that you remembered, or that you should have memorized, is that this is going to be x plus 2 over the square root of 20 all squared plus 1. So now we just have some term squared plus 1 one on the numerator, this is definitely an arctangent formula. <coughs> I'm going to leave this part here just so you can see what we started with. <coughs> so the last thing we need to do <coughs> is, again, you're basically doing u substitution here because now we just have this term here and we can figure out what to do with that. Um, you're basically doing a u substitution where u is equal to x plus 2 over the square root of 20. But kind of like with the ln term, I'm not going to write out the whole u substitution because you really don't need to. Here, I didn't need to write it out because the derivative was exactly the top of the bottom. You always just get ln. Here, uh, your, your derivative is just a constant. Like, you don't have any extra things to substitute. So you, this is a similar to that uh, integral you've done where if you were doing, for example, like integral of 3x, you don't really need to do u substitution there. You're just going to divide by 3 at the end. Similar thing going on here. You don't really need to do u substitution. You're just going to divide by whatever that constant is. The constant in this case is the uh, coefficient of x. Coefficient of x is 1 over square root of 20. So we're just going to divide by 1 over square root of 20. So what we get here is... 1 over 10 arctangent of the inside part there because the, everything else in the formula worked out fine. But like I said, we have to divide by that coefficient that we would have got by doing u substitution 1 over the square root of 20.
to simplify that a little bit, since we're dividing by 1 over square root of 20, that's the same thing as multiplying by square root of 20. So we get square root of 20 over 10. of our r10 and we can do a little bit more simplification because square root of 20 can really be factored so this is 2 square root of 5 and then we would divide by 10 so those would cancel out 2 <clears throat> so really we get square root of 5 over 5 x plus 2 over r10 of x plus 2 over square root of 20 so that was the value we got from this so remember, we had those two integrals, and they were subtracted. So from the first one, we got that. And from the second one, we got that. So our answer is going to be that one minus this. And remember, it's going to be plus c because we had an indefinite integral to start with. So let me write our final answer down here. So we're going to have 3 ln of x plus 2 squared plus 20 minus this term down here, root 5 over 5 arctan of x squared plus 2 over root 20 plus our constant of integration c because we had an indefinite integral. So these ones can be pretty complicated, as you can see here. Um, but typically, if you can't do it by partial fractions, it's going to become something that you do by lns and arctans and how you break it up. Again, there's a couple different ways of doing it. The way that I did makes the most sense to me just because you can always find the ln very easy and then just work with the arctan from there. But you should always expect that your answer is going to be in a form like this for this type of problem.